Are the Washington Wizards better than last year? I have three reasons why they are going to be. And I also have three improves and sustains for the Washington Wizards this season coming up. Next on Locked On Wizards. You are Locked On Wizards, your daily Washington Wizards podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Your team every day. What's up, everybody? It's your boy, Brandon Scott, again, and I appreciate you guys making Locked On Wizards your first listen every single day. We are part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team, every single day. And tonight's episode is brought to you by FanDuel. You can start the season with a big return on FanDuel. Place your first $5 bet, and you'll get started with $200 in bonus bets guaranteed. All you have to do is visit FanDuel.com to get started. All right, everybody, tonight we're going to talk about three reasons why the Washington Wizards would definitely be better then next year but look don't get excited because they ain't gonna be no playoff team and i'm gonna get into three improves and three sustains for the washington wizards this season coming up and cooper flag is he the prototype for the modern nba player we're gonna take a look at a report that says that he is so let's get into it are the washington wizards gonna be better than last year and i definitely think they are definitely gonna be better than last year but not that much better but three reasons why they will be significantly or not significantly but a little bit better than last year all right, let's get into it, everybody. Reason number one, full season under head coach Brian Keith. Last year, we had kind of the 50-50 thing going on where half of the season were under West Sale Jr. And the other half were under interim, at the time, interim head coach Brian Keith. Now, Brian Keith is the head coach, the guy running the show. And we have a full season for him to implement his system and get these guys running on the same sheet of music. So I think that Brian Keith, you know, definitely him being the guy the second half of last season, Look at all the, you know, look how this roster kind of responded to him. You know, defensively, we got better. Defensively, we're better on every aspect of defense, whether it was perimeter defense, paint defense, uh, uh, communication defensively, closeouts. We were a better defensive team last year. Pace. When not only when Brian Keith was head coach in the second half of the season, but when Jordan Poole was point guard, this team was faster. They attacked defenses in transition and they were a better team offensively. So you definitely saw this a better team under head coach Brian Keith last year as opposed to um, former head coach Weston Sell Jr. Not going to kick a man while he's down. Obviously, he's now his uh, assistant coach in Chicago, but he just didn't get it done. And you saw so many reasons why Brian Keith is definitely the man for the job early on in the rebuild for the Washington Wizards. So like I said, a full season under head coach Brian Keith, I think you're going to see a lot of progression, not only of you know the veterans, but – especially the young talent that we have with Bilal Kulabali, Alex Saar, Bob Carrington, Tristan Vucevic, and Keyshawn George. Number two, we have better vets than last year. Now, nothing against JP13 and Kyle Kuzma, even though they did do their thing leading from the front, being those vets. But, you know, Valentunas is going, is going to pay dividends when it comes to the development of Alex Saar. Malcolm Brogdon is going to do well with developing not only Bob Carrington, but Jordan Poole at the point guard position. Kyle Kuzma is going to continue to really – uh, mentor and help out Bilal Kulabali, Keyshawn George, uh, Corey Kisper, guys on the wing who, you know, he's definitely going to, these vets are get, definitely going to mentor these guys and get these guys uh, going and definitely teach them how to not only be a professional NBA player on the court, but off the court also. So like I said, better veterans. I mean, Jonas Valanciunas, you know, hate it, love it, what we had, you know, the, the center situation last year, but Jonas Valanciunas is, go, is definitely making this team better. Now, can you expect some level of decline with him? Yeah, to a certain degree. We don't know how much, but age 32, you're definitely going to see some decline. We don't know how much, but you know, but he's still going to be very, very effective. Now, the biggest thing with Jonas Valanciunas is he's not asked to be a third or fourth option. He's going to be the last option in the starting five. You know, and obviously, scoring option number one and number two is going to be Kyle Kuzma and Jordan Poole. And after that, you definitely want to see Alex Hart and Black Kulabali, you know, definitely pick it up and be threats on the offensive end, even though we know they're both very raw and their progression offensively is going to come with time. Bilal is going to be a lot more polished offensively than Alex are because he had one year and the Olympics to kind of uh, get, you know, his feet running, man. But I think that they definitely need the touches. You know, that's how you develop. You get the touches, definitely playing time. And I definitely expect 25 to 30 minutes, not only for Bilal Kulabali, but for Alex are. And again, we don't know what the starting five is going to be. Yes, uh, head coach Brian Key is going to show a lot of different combinations, a lot of different lineups in preseason training camp. We're going to see a lot of different combinations. But I do expect that, you know, I mean, look, Alex Starr is number two overall. You start that guy. Number two overall, you start him. And Bilal was a starter last year uh, for the most part. And so I think both of these guys, 
not only for the good of the team, but for them personally, as far as their development, they need to start. So um, they need to touch us. I definitely think that can definitely help with their progression and development. All right, number three, players know their roles. Now, we all know that with JP13, a.k.a. Jordan Poole, and Kyle Kuzma, a.k.a. Clutch Kuz, the biggest issue to them last year were a couple things. Um, volume of shooting, you know, a lot of shots, a lot of attempts, man. Um, lack of efficiency. Now, if you look at the stats, you know, if you look at Kyle, Kuzma, especially Kyle Kuzma, um, you look at his shooting statistics, it, they kind of scream at you that efficiency was an issue. But when we say inefficiency, it has to do with volume, putting up a lot of attempts to get up to 20 plus points per night. We definitely want to see them take high percent of shots and definitely utilize the shot clock, which is something they did not do last year. Both of them were guilty for it. You know, shooting the ball early on in the shot clock, you know, having one or two possessions to, uh, per shot clock, we need to utilize the shot clock. Definitely run more plays. Definitely get guys moving out the ball more. Definitely everybody has to be on the same sheet of music, not only defensively, but especially offensively. And I definitely think that they will go a long way with team co uh, coercion and or cohesion, my bad, and uh, chemistry. So, like I said, these are three main reasons that I think we're definitely going to be better next year. Now, let's take a look at the um, the win loss record last year. Uh, real quick, hold on, um, because like I said, this team they're not going to be too much better than last year. Let's be real. I mean, you can't really gauge success this season for the Washington Wizards with win the lo wins or losses. There's not a team that's going to be a playoff team. It's not a team that's going to be in the play-in. Uh, they will be better, but we're when I say better, we're talking about pretty much you know five, you know know three to five games here, and that's just is what it is because this team is still early on in the rebuild, and you're not going to start to see any kind of progress as far as team-wise and wins, losses, for two to three years. This is the team that, especially when you, we start moving on from a lot of these vets, man, um, and especially when they start a youth movement in D.C., this team's not going to be much better than last year, and it is what it is on that front. So if you have any expectations of the team maybe making a plan, I would definitely shelf those uh, expectations in because this team is, is going to be slightly better. But, again, they are not going to be that significantly better than um, last year. So looking at the win-loss record last year, Obviously, 15 and 67. So, <laughs> you know, I'm realistically looking at 20 wins. Now, if they can get to 25, I think that would be, a de you know, definitely um, them reaching a little bit because I think the 20 wins is definitely what you're looking at. I'm going to say 20, the 22 wins, maybe 25, and that's best-case scenario. But to me, you're looking at 20 wins. So, like I said, they will be better, especially with Jonas Valanciunas. Especially with Malcolm Brogdon, you know Kyle Kuzma and Jordan Poole continue to be those guys, those very aggressive scorers that we know they can be, and definitely going to be good leaders. But um, especially if you look at the bench, the bench is significantly better in my opinion. Nothing against um, Landry Shamit, but I think that with Keyshawn George, I think with Bob Carrington, I think Corey Kispert definitely make the bench better than last year in my opinion. So they, they're going to be better, but they're not going to be significantly better. But it is what you know, it is what it is because we are fighting for a top five draft pick, and Cooper Flag or Ace Bailey is the targets in this year's draft coming up man, or the, the nba draft coming up in 2025 so like i said i would definitely expect them to be better but not significantly better you know they're definitely going to need wins and losses would not be part of the equation as far as judging them whether they had a good year or not it's going to be progression in young talent you definitely want to allow progress to a certain degree especially offensively defensively he's already where we need him to be offensively you definitely want to see some progression alex r you know the first thing you're going to see him really start to shine at is his rim protection you know, offensively, I think as the season goes on, he's going to get better and better at on the offensive end. But he's going to be very raw in the beginning, man. So his defense is going to be the part of his game is going to really going to shine. Keyshawn George, same thing. You know, not, not, not the same thing, but um, small progressions. You know, for him, it's going to be the offensive end. Him being a sniper, him being that three-point shooter in the mid-range specialist. Um, and defensively, he has shown effort. And Corey Kisper, kind of the same thing as Keyshawn George. Um, you know, the shot's going to be there. You know, his ability to slash the basket, drive to the basket, his basketball IQ. All things are going to shine early on. But, you know, at this point, Corey Kispert is what he is. You know, a three-point shooter, a sniper that, you know, and a guy who's going to be very smart with the basketball. He's going to be able to move move around without the basketball and be that guy who can slash and attack the basket. So, like I said, guys, um, those are three reasons why I definitely think this team's better. You know, to kind of reiterate real quick. Uh, one, full season under head coach Brian Keith. Last year, you know, was half West of Seven Jr., half Brian Keith, and – you know, half a year is not long enough to really, really implement a system. And I think that a full year under Brian Keith, he's going to be able to implement a system and really get the most out of his roster and really, really do, um, 
get into his job here in DC. Uh, number two, better vets. We have a better, um, better vets on the roster. Jonas Valanciunas, Malcolm Brogdon. I think you're going to see career seasons out of Kyle Kuzma and Jordan Poole. Uh, Sadiq Bay. We're probably going to see him maybe fourth quarter of the season, but I don't really think they need to bring him in this year. I definitely think you know they just sit him for the whole season and let him heal up and start him off next season. So, and then number three, players know their roles. And then, um, like I said, um, looking at a couple of players exclusively, you're looking at Jordan Poole and Kyle Kuzma. And I, these are questions that I've asked both Jordan Poole and Kyle Kuzma at the exit interviews and in and the press conferences, which is. You know, look, what part of your games do you need do you need to change for other players, especially young players and Bilal Kulabali, Alex R and Bob Cairns to get better? And they know they have to change your game. They have to be more efficient. They have to find ways to get make other people around them better. Utilize, you know, utilize your skill set. You know, look at the Jordan Poole and Kyle Kuzma, the scores. Use that to your advantage. Attack the basket, get to the free throw line, and really become a threat where you can collapse defenses and utilize shooters on the outside, like Kyle Kuzma, or like you know, Kyle Kuzma. Uh, Corey Kispert and Keyshawn George and Bub Carrington. So definitely utilize your skill set, but also change your game. You know, with Jordan Poole being, you know, hopefully the starting point guard, become a more of a pass first guy. We know you can score, but utilize your pass and your vision. You know, attack the basket, get to the free throw line, and definitely collapse that defense and get the ball in the hands of Blau and Oxar because touch is going to help them develop. So those are three reasons why I think the Washington Wizards are definitely going to be better than last year, not by too much. But they will be a better team. So we're going to get into three improves and three sustains. And Cooper Flag is he the prototype? But before we do, tonight's episode is brought to you by FanDuel. Hey, NFL fans, you can start the season with a big return on FanDuel, America's number one sports book. So when you get a hunch in the middle of the game, you can check out the latest stats, view live play by play, and so much more on the same page where you place your bets. Is that easy, y'all? Y'all, you'll get started with two hundred dollars in bonus bets guaranteed when you place your first five dollar bet that's fandle.com fandle thank you for making locked on wizards your first listen today for your second listen enjoy the locked on nba podcast there is no off season in the nba and locked on nba provides daily basketball analysis for national and local experts in 30 minutes or less no one keeps you as informed and entertained as locked on nba available on youtube or wherever you get podcasts part of the locked on podcast network your team every single day all right, everybody, let's get back into it. Now, I have three areas where the Washington Wizards need to improve and sustain as a team. All right, so we're going to get into the improves first. All right, number one, establishing a defensive identity. That is an improve. Now, we know not only last year, but probably the last couple of years, Washington Wizards have been abysmal defensively. And I'm not saying one area defensively. I'm talking about the whole package. They have been bad whether it's defending the perimeter, whether it's defending the paint, whether it's defending transition, whether it's communication, whether it's closing out on shooters, they have been notoriously bad on the defensive end. But I think that will change under head coach Brian Keith. Because like I said, under a full year, Brian Keith, he's going to be able to implement his defensive system. And, you know, what's the still junior? He had, he had his issues, and we're not going to get into him because, like I said, he's moved on, and we're looking forward to a full year under head coach Brian Key. But I think that defensively, they have to establish a defensive identity. They have to communicate defensively. They have to get out on the court and really set up before, you know, in transition. They have to put pressure on shooters, not only closing out, but putting pressure on deep, uh, on offenses on the perimeter. They have to rebound de- defensively. They have to really defend the paint. So they have to establish the defensive identity right out the gate early on to really, really build who they are defensively as a team. They have to establish that early on. I'm saying game one. They have to show what they can do defensively and really, again, establish that defensive identity. Number two, be more efficient and utilize the shot clock. And this is a team goal here. Now, obviously, we're looking at Kyle Kuzma and Jordan Poole. Both of them are, in my opinion, high-level scorers. But they have to learn to be more efficient. They have to learn to utilize the shot clock. They have to learn to change parts of the games to a certain degree to help the guys around them get better. Because, yes, you know, Kyle Kuzma and Jordan Poole are both going to eat. I think that both of them, I made it known, I'm on record saying that both of them are going to have career seasons. Kyle Kuzma, I think, could be a all-star this season. And looking at uh, Jordan Poole, I think he's definitely going to get votes for most improved player, in my humble opinion. But, you know, they have to learn to be more efficient. They have to learn to shoot a lot more high percentage shots, especially from three-point range. They have to utilize shot clock. One, two possessions in the shot clock cannot happen this year. We have to learn to pass the ball around. Ball movement, man. Team basketball. 
have to be the emphasis offensively this season for the Washington Wizards, man. So let's look at another improve real quick. Leaders lead by example. Kind of like don't listen to what I say, watch what I do type of deal. And, that, and, and again, it goes to Jordan Poole and Kyle Kuzma because, yes, we have a lot of leaders, especially a lot of veteran leaders on this team. You understand that Tunis has been around. He's a leader. Um, Anthony Gill back on the roster. He's definitely a leader. He's definitely been kind of an underrated, under the radar voice on the bench for the Washington Wizards, and I think he, he will continue to be so. Um, Kyle Kuzma, we know that, you know, won a championship with the Lakers in 2020. He's a guy who definitely has some leadership in his locker room. He has, he has been that leader. Probably, you can argue he's probably been the most consistent leader in the locker room from Washington since he came over here from the Lakers, man. When, you know, when guys like Bradley Bill should have been, when guys like, um, you know, KP to a certain degree, KP's kind of a guy who's kind of a quiet guy. Um, but Kyle Kuzma has been that leader for us on a consistent basis for the last two to three years, in my opinion. So he needs to continue to do so. But he has to show through example, through his play. You know, look, and how does he show that? By being more efficient, by changing parts of his game to make other people better. You know, he's got to show, he's got to lead by example. And I'll bring up Jordan Poole because, look, Jordan Poole, age 25, he hasn't hit his prime yet. And right now is a gray area. Is he part of the future long term? Are we are we trying to build his trade value up? It's been known that this front office is going is trying to invest heavily in the backcourt of Jordan Poole and Bob Carrington. So, you know, you, you want to look at Jordan Poole this year as a guy that needs to step up and be more of a leader. And I think he will because look at what he's doing with Alex Sar, Bilal Kulabali, and Bob Carrington off the court doing workouts, bringing the guys out and working out with them. You know, if you look at the work he's done off the court as far as um, stuff he's done in the community with, you know, um, getting kids ready for school, he's already picking up where Bradley Bill, John Wall, and Gilbert Arenas have really you know, left the torch. He, he, They have officially passed the torch of being that guy in the organization who's doing work off the court. Because like I said, Gilbert Arenas is in the torch. He's known, you know, very, you know, back in the day being in Barry Farms, handing out shoes, handing out food, supplies. Same thing uh, with John Wall and Bradley Bill. So, like I said, jo George Poole is starting to solidify himself and making his presence felt not only on the court in D.C., but off the court in, in the community with, you know, definitely helping kids out. Because, uh, you know, right now, look, with the economy, times are up. So, you know, you definitely like to see that former star player in D.C. And I think that, you know, like I said, I love to see it. You know, I love to see him doing that, being very active with the community. But getting back to the on-court production, he's got to lead by example, being a more efficient player. You know, definitely, we know that mentally he can, you know, withstand criticism because he, I'm mean, lower. I mean, he took more criticism than probably any other NBA player outside of Zion Williamson this season. So he's shown that he can take his L's and keep working. So continue to show leadership, continue to be that leader. And I think this team will be a better team if they improve in these three areas. So real quick before we move on, everybody, uh, the three areas where the Washington Wizards as a team need to improve uh, defensively. Every area of defense, perimeter, transition, paint, closing out on shooters, communicating, switching out on, um, on, you know, switching out. They have to get better. They have to establish that defensive identity. Number two, be more efficient and utilize the shot clock. Shoot more high percentage shots. Find ways to use your game to make other people better. Number three, leaders, by, uh, leaders lead by example, not just listening to what I say, but watching what I do. You know, you know and I, you know, I made it known that as a leader, not only are you showing young guys what to do on the court, but off the court. You know, work ethic, you know, certain parts of your game, you know, work, you know, that, that's the biggest thing is work. Seeing these guys come out there and put the work in, you know, especially, you know, so I think that those are areas where this team would definitely get better if they can lead by example. And I think, you know, if you look at Jordan Poole with the work he's done with Alex R and other players off the court in workouts, they are starting to show that. So, like I said, uh, good times are definitely ahead, but these are three areas that I definitely think that the Washington Wizards have to improve in if they want to be a better team not only this season, but going forward. So what are three areas where the Washington Wizards need to sustain what they're already doing? We're going to get into that next, but before we do, tonight's episode is brought to you by eBay Motors. Passion, drive, and patience. The formula for winning championships is also what keeps your ride or die alive. eBay Motors has everything you need to maintain your vehicle and level it up to peak performance. Superchargers, roof racks, exhaust kits, LED headlights, and more. Whether you're in the speed, power, or style, eBay Motors has you covered. With over 122 million parts for your number one ride or die, you always find exactly what you're looking for. And with eBay Guaranteed Fit, your part is guaranteed to fit your ride every time or your money back. Because with eBay Motors, you're burning rubber, not cash. And with all the parts you need at the prices you want, it's easy to make your car the MVP and bring home huge wins. Keep your ride or die alive at ebaymotors.com. Eligible items only, exclusions apply eBay guaranteed fit only available to 
U.S. customers. Thank you again for making Locked On Wizards your first listen today. Now, for your second listen, go find Locked On NBA, where the local experts keep you updated daily on all the biggest storylines ahead of the regular season. Find Locked On NBA on YouTube or wherever you listen to your podcast. All right, everybody, let's get into the last part of tonight's episode, Three Sustains. So we went over um, three reasons why the Washington Wizards will be better. You know, to kind of reiterate real quick, full season, one full season under head coach Brian Keefe, better vets in the roster, and players know their roles. We also went over three areas where the Washington Wizards need to improve as a team. Establishing a defensive ID is the first one. Number two, be more efficient and utilize the shot clock. And number three, leaders lead by example. All right, let's get into what three areas do the Washington Wizards need to sustain and continue what they're doing. Number one, culture of accountability. I, I, I've said it time and time again. Head coach Brian Keith has done wonders with his roster. And you saw it in the second half of last season where he solidified a standard, which, you know, like I said, I ain't trying to kick him wise down, but former head coach Weston Sell Jr. did not do that. There was no standard. Brian Keith. He, he set a standard. You know, he definitely set a standard for this team. And he he solidified, uh, he de- um, developed an, a situation where it's a culture of accountability. You know, they, you know, not only coaches, but players hold each other accountable. And you saw that with the Watch Wizards. Not only with the vets, but you saw that with the young guys, too. They develop a culture of accountability, which I think is key early on in the rebuild. And is probably the most important aspect of a team early on in the rebuild is, is setting up your culture, right? Uh, setting a standard. You know, setting an aura and a culture of accountability. So if they, you know, for them to be successful long term, they have to continue to do that. You know, hold each other accountable. You know, definitely play up to your standard. Number two, continue to establish a relationship with the fan base on and off the court. Now, like I said, um, we've had some guys on this team the last couple of years that are very, you know, fan favorites. You know, obviously Daniel Gafford is now a Dallas Maverick, but he was one guy where, you know, he would take a kid before the game and, have them throw up an alley you, you know, stuff like that. You know, you, they have to solidify a relationship with this fan base. Reasons for that is, well, the same reason why every team in D.C., you know, to a certain degree struggles with fandom, right? Especially the Washington Commanders, which is the Washington, D.C. is known as a melting pot. A lot of people who live in D.C. or work in D.C. are not from D.C. You know, obviously, you know, a lot of government workers, a lot of Fortune 500, um, a lot of big businesses in the D.C. area, not only D.C., but obviously Maryland and the Commonwealth of Virginia. So you have to establish a relationship with the fan base and try to have a lot of these fans who may not necessarily be from the DC area, especially if we get, you know, not only for the DC area in um, Commonwealth of Virginia and Merlin, a lot of fans come from the Tywood area. Uh, there's fans in Delaware, there's fans in West Virginia. So like I said, definitely have to, you know, especially for teams like the Wizards, Commanders, the Nationals, when you're dealing with a fan base, when you're dealing with um, the type of city like Washington DC, where a sizable amount of your population is not from here, you very well, you, you know, you see a lot of home games where, the, the visiting team has a lot more fans than the home teams. You have to change that narrative, I think. So you, how do you do that? You have to establish a relationship with them. And I think that in a certain degree, the, you know, the organization is starting to do that. You know, the uh, owner Ted Leonis is starting to do certain things with the, with the games where they're starting to have a lot more interaction with the fans. And then if you look at the work off the court, I said it time and time again, you know, Gilbert Arenas has done a lot for uh, Washington, D.C. Um, same thing with John Wall, same thing with Bradley Bill. And Jordan Poole is one of the players, you know, also Bub Carrington. You know, he did a lot, he's done a lot of work this offseason in Baltimore. Anthony Gill's done a lot of work, and he continues to do so. So these guys and their work they're doing in the DMV, whether it's the D.C. area, whether it's in the Commonwealth of Virginia, Alexandria, or Arlington, or whether it's PG County or Montgomery County in Maryland, these guys continue to do a lot of work off the court and establishing a relationship with the fan base and the inhabitants of the D.C. area. So I think that if they want to have sustainable success, it, you know, a lot of that comes from the fans, you know, showing up, showing their support. And how do you attain that? Building relationships with them. And I think they're, they're definitely on the road to doing that. All right, number three, not only playing, but practicing and training as a unit. Chemistry is key. And you see that, man. You know, the last couple of years, you've seen Kyle Kuzma, Jordan Poole, take a lot of these guys, in, whether they're going to the West Coast or locally, work with them. And you want to see that. And you, you definitely want to see a lot more of that because you have a lot more vets a lot, a lot more mentors on the roster with, you know, Valentinas with Mac and Braga. Definitely build that chemistry as a unit because it's important. The, the, that camaraderie is important. If you, you know, last year, a lot of these players, you know, especially players who are no longer on the team, looking at Tyus Jones and Landry Shamit, they themselves said that, look, we like playing here. 
they like playing together. You know, that's chemistry. That's standard. That's culture. And that's why that's important because, look, if you like playing here, you want to be here long term. You know, if it, it's not a job at that point. You know, you're just playing ball. And like I said, you're not, you can't judge a season off wins and losses because the team's going to win no more than 20 games. And hopefully 25, but I just, I wouldn't bank on it. If you're going to bet on the man, get your money back because I would not bet on them winning 25 games. But it, it, how do you really gauge success this season? Progression of young talent. You know, and like I said, when you want to play together, when you like playing here, that builds a culture of accountability, but a culture where you're just playing ball. And that's what we want them to do this season is that there's no, there, there's really no, no pressure because we, you're not expecting too much out of this group, right? This is a 20 win team. This is a team that is looking to be a top five draft pick in the 2025 NBA draft. So just let them go out and play ball. A lot of the pressure goes on who? Head coach Brian Keith in development and general manager Will Dawkins and president of basketball operations Michael Winger because they have to find those diamonds in the rough in the drafts coming up in 2025 and 2026. You know, and looking at head coach Brian Keith, his big calling card is what? Development. So this team, this, this roster is young, man, and they have no expectations. So, you know, a lot of the pressure doesn't fall on the players. A lot of the pressure falls on head coach Brian Keith and general manager Will Dawkins and company, man, um, because, look, they have to find those players. They have to, you know, not only in, you know, in the lottery, but, you know, looking at these picks in the later stages of the first round, which, if you know, if you look at a lot of these vets on the roster that we're going to end up moving on from, whether it's Kyle Kuzma, you know, Sadiq Bay, you only found choose of Michael Brogdon. You know, chances are these draft picks you get in return aren't going to be lottery draft picks. They're going to be draft picks in their later stages of the first round or second round picks. So you have to learn to find these diamonds in the rough and really find, you know, and this is where a talent evaluation is key with Will Dawkins, Travis Schlink, and Michael Winger because you have to find these players not only in the lottery, but in the later stages of the first round and even in the second round. And again, looking at head coach Brian Keith, you know, a lot of, a lot of pressures on him because he, is his resume he's one of the best developmental head coaches in the nba but you know the work is on him right now he's got the he's got to get the best out of Bilal. he's got to get the best out of buff he's got to get the best out of alex Sar, man and you can say the same thing with these vets you know looking at jordan Poole and kyle kuzma he's got to get their trade value up because if you want to move on from them at some point and you know jordan Poole, not so much because look they very well could see him as the future at point guard and in, in, in the future backcourt mate of Bob Carrington long term because look, he's only 25. And City Bank very well could be a long term piece. But looking at you know Jonathan Chuns, Kyle Kuzma, and Malcolm Brogdon, you know, he, development goes with veterans too. Getting these guys up and getting the trade value up to where when it's time to flip them for assets, we can do so. So you guys get in the comment section, let me know what you guys are thinking. What do you guys think about um, do you agree with the those are the, the three reasons that the Washington Wizards will be better this season. And looking at the three improves and three sustains, definitely get in the comment section. Let me know what you guys are thinking. Do you agree? Do you disagree? And why? So, all right, everybody. Um, I will see you guys tomorrow night. Hail to the Wizards and peace. See you guys next time.